everybody, and welcome to the IUN Adventures, a world created and ruled by the Fae. I'm Jessica, also known as I Sneeze Stars, in places like TikTok and Instagram, and I will be your shenanigan sovereign. Okay, I hurt myself. This evening, hi, this is gonna be a good one. Um, Quickly, I will go through the shows that we have on the channel. Uh, Tuesday nights at 7.30 p.m. EST, we have a Shadowrun campaign GM'd by at Coddlesworth called State of the Union that also has myself and Daniel in it. Um, Thursday nights, we have uh, the Lost Continent ID D campaign GM'd by Mr. Markham at 8 p.m. EST. Friday nights, we have the Legends of Kralis at 11 p.m. EST. I don't know. They don't. One of them doesn't have daylight savings time. I, I never know anymore. I think it's 10 now. It's 10 now? 10.30. So. 10.30. 10.30. I don't know because DM actually doesn't have daylight savings time. <laughs> so it's mm. just whenever. Um, anywho, that is... That is a game created by uh, Telerius Game Master, who is also the GM. Um, and Saturday nights, we have uh, the Moonstone Matriarchy, a an all-girl campaign, D&D, D&D campaign, um, DM'd by myself at 8 p.m. EST. Um, no more talking from me, Pyrea. Yes. Hey, everybody. Yes, yes, I am Pyrea. Hi, everybody. Um, I go by Pyrea on all the socials. Um, I play Alewin Alanthus, a uh, high elf chronology wizard. Uh, yeah, that's the long and short of it. Uh, let's go ahead and go uh, to screen left and go to James. I knew it. Okay, for once I was like hovering over the mute button. I was like, I was I'm like, going to be ready. <laughs> it's my turn. <laughs> right? Uh Hello, Internet. Uh, I am James. I go by Mazrix or Mazrix24 pretty much throughout the Internet. Um, find me most places. Uh, tonight, I will be playing <clears throat> R of Dezard, our variant human circle of stars druid. It's a lot more serious wisdom -y than I have ever been and all that I aspire to be. Um, yeah. There might be shenanigans. Stay tuned. Uh, but other than me, let's go to ba -ba -ba Dan. Me. Hi, everybody. I'm Dan. You can find me as the Speed of Candy on all of the various internet places. Tonight, I will be playing Damascus Silva, the half-elf bard warlock who... I got nothing. Who did the recap this week, so I'll remember what happened in a second. <laughs> Good job, baby. <laughs> Thank you. And I'm Carol. Uh, I'll throw hello. It to Carol. Yeah, I'm the last one. I know it's me. <laughs> I'm Carol. Hello. Um, you can find me at Imaginary Carol on uh, TikTok in particular. That's pretty much all I do nowadays. Um, I will be playing Gilly Glane, uh, the Warbarian of the party. Um, and I will be doing my nails very badly because I just did my epidural and my hands are shaking like crazy. <laughs> I need to just stop until I know that feeling. Yeah. It's a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> just wait it out wait it out i've you know what my middle finger send me so on a rant for a second i've been wanting to do my nails for like three days now but i lost the cuticle clippers no and and i need <clears throat> they are a vital part of doing my nails i just They're push them back part. i never do the clippers no they have to go i'm sorry i the yeah. psoriasis or is all around them my like oh. and stuff so I, ha I'm, I just like i just clip it off but yeah yeah anywho daniel mm -hmm. take oh. it what away. happened last week this year previously in aa episode 73 too stupid to kill Demon Lewin and Vistrixen share some scheming moments as they prepare for a lovely dinner, dropping the bomb that she may have been responsible for getting a Lewin Prime killed by the False Hydra. Meanwhile, our heroes from Iowan Prime plot to, to charm Vistrixen and win his trust so they can make their way back to their world and also maybe use his timeless realm to fight off the librarian if they needed to. 
They instead immediately piss him off, repeatedly insulting Demon Alewin by calling her Demon Alewin, casting spells on her, and generally being their usual frustrating selves. They do learn that Demon Lewin is lying to them about a whole bunch of things, but have difficulty finding specifics. After a rev drunkenly tries to polymorph Demon Alewin into a penguin, and instead wild shapes into a, pe- a ferret, Vistrixen decides that he has had enough and brings a rev to his room. No, not like that. Damascus and Gilly use this opportunity to pump a laywin for information, and she simply shuts them down, until a weird echoing ghost repeats everything that they say. Frustrated by the echoes, they give up and confront her like five minutes later in her room, where Damascus admits that he might have another way to get them out of the realm they are in if the Strixen can't be trusted, and Ella admits that she just wants to go home. Gilly convinces her that she and the crew will be willing to help as long as she's not, you know, evil, and Demon Elewin tries to convince Damascus that going back in time to save Threven is a capital V very bad idea. Once they part ways and head back to bed, Arev awakes and sneaks out of his room, calling for Renano. He's confronted by Demon Elewin, who tries to shoo him back to bed, but fails, as Vic Strixen wakes up and catches him as he turns back into a ferret. Wishing Demon Elewin a good, a good night, Vistrixen throws a rev into Vistrixen's bedroom, where a rev turns back into a human and falls asleep next to the cunning demon, sober as a druid, because it was all a ruse. And that's what happened last time on A. That was a good recap. That was very Excellent. good. I loved it. Also, I love that you totally caught that, Gilly. <laughs> Just the... Oh, yeah. no. <laughs> God dang. Okay. So it is I wouldn't say the morning because there really isn't a huge a huge like shift in date tonight. It's pretty gloomy where Vestrixen is most of the time. Um but you all begin to awake. Um is there anything that you are doing, Caro? Sorry, Gilly. Call you Gilly when you're Caro and Caro when you're Gilly. Fair enough. There is actually one thing that I was definitely going to check. Does my candy box currently work? Oh. Should I roll my D4 and see? Your D4 will fill it. Hang on. I'm going to roll. I want to roll to see if this is. Yes, your D. It does. You rolled okay. real high. It definitely does. That's good so. for Gilly's mental health because if it didn't work, she was about to freak the fuck out. So <laughs> not because chocolate, because is connection to home in Gilly's oh, mind. <laughs> that's so sad. Yeah. And it's mm-hmm. oh Gilly is like not super sure that her good friend Posey is not like manually refilling this thing every day. So it is it is a huge possibility that Posey <laughs> is actually refilling this every day. It was a gift that you got one year a long time ago uh, during your friendship. And who could say? Maybe she goes out and buys them. Maybe these are just what are left from her her daily. I like know, to think they're like the wonky ones that don't like turn out quite right. Go into the candy box. Gilly doesn't care. Still tastes good. <laughs> <laughs> no, she does not. That will be. Yeah, I, just, I was just thinking about that. Like, would that, if it's a connection to the other, <laughs> you will have to um, actually discover how what happens in game with that because I need to know. Okay. Um, is so that's it. Yes. Yeah, she was just gonna check on that. And was going to have a massive crisis if it Ooh. didn't. But it did. So it's good. Hang on. Let me roll something. Mm-mm. There's no time. Oh, fuck roll me. There's, roll more things. So, no. There's time is not a thing here. There are 30 pieces of chocolate in there. Amazing. Oh, shit. Ooh. You get one yeah. D4 a, a day, like a day or whatever. No, there are 30 all right. pieces of chocolate. Jackpot. The dice nat 20 and they were like, yes, there were all the chocolates in there. <laughs> Okay. Gilly's like, oh shit, I gotta go give these. All <laughs> I feel like it's like a very small box, and it's just like oh! overflowing. Um, it's 
I forgot my husband's name. Who? <laughs> Damascus. <laughs> That's his name. To go for the cat's name. I just, I fully just blanked. I was like, fuck, what is that guy's name? <laughs> uh, Dan- Daniel, I'm so sorry. I love you That's so funny. much, clearly. Uh, what, <laughs> what are you doing this morning? Um, he will slowly pull apart the pillows that are separating him and Faza because mm-hmm. she made a pillow for it and yeah, see she if she's still there. Is she still there? She is not. Need to put a bell on that girl. Yeah. Uh, I will get up. I will feed paws. The moment you roll over. She is on the other side of the bed, standing like you're like nose to nose. What? Why? Why what? Why do you need to put a bell on me? Because you are incredibly sneaky, and it's hard to keep track of where you go. That's why you love me. And then she gives you a kiss. It's on the list. Ah, morning, darling. Good morning. I'm sorry I made a pillow for it. I may have overreacted just a little bit. And having some time to think about that, I can see that that maybe it might have been just a minor overreaction. <laughs> That's all right. I don't mind you being jealous about me and the fact that other girls may be interested, but I don't think that's something you got to worry about. That other people find you attractive? Is something exactly. actually wrong with you when you've cast a spell on me? What? What? No, what? why? <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Nothing. Uh-huh. Don't worry. If I was going to get with another girl, you would be there. Now let's go have some breakfast. Wait, what? What? <laughs> As you walk out the room. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> she, <laughs> Think about it. You'll figure it out. Uh, there's hello. like a full there's a full like minute where she just sits there and goes <laughs> what is that what Damascus and then follows back you to some down. of those books she's read yeah she does takes her a second um that's in uh, she hasn't goblins gotten to love that three. part in goblins in love 2 yet no no that's gonna happen in goblins in love 3 because goblins, <laughs> love three is just, goblins in love menage a trois that's oh my god come on yes it need, needs to happen it's not even a real book and i'm like i would read that <laughs> um, <I know. laughs> pre-ordering pre-order uh all right i'm looking for rev. Mm-hmm. i'm sorry i had <clears> my <throat> my jaw fucked with today so i'm really trying yes voice from above um you're waking up in bed what what are you what are you doing? Am I currently touching anyone? Did you decide to be sneaky and try and roll over and cuddle in the middle of the night? No. Then you are on your side of the, you are on your side of the bed. Okay. Um, And the assumption is that we have achieved a long rest, correct? Yes, you have achieved a long rest. Okay. You hear, you hear breathing, steady breathing from behind you. Can I... Stealthily look to see who that is. <laughs> Just in case he's, it's not the person you went to sleep with. <laughs> uh, more because, like, I know what I was doing last night, but I want to, like, if my back's to them, I don't want to necessarily, like, alert them. I just want to get more information right now. So you kind of just look over your shoulder. Very sneaky. I'm not even going to make you roll because he is asleep right now. Um, His glasses are 
folded and on the night table he's his hair is a little messed up and he's got like a hand kind of like on his chest as he's just not snoring just breathing softly okay um then i would like to try and quietly out of the get out of the bed and look around the room to see if there's anything that that like sticks out to me any like a uh, open documents on a desk or um like it, you know uh, make make a make a stealth check to get out of the bed for sure all right cuz that's that's what every druid is good at right stealth yeah Damn. Remember that I had you write down your if you had any guidances last or or like whatever uh bardics. I, I think I used them all to be fair. Okay. Okay. Um, seven. Seven. Okay, hang on. What is his perception? He is asleep. Yeah, that's the thing. I was gonna give that's I was true. Give, Advantage? I'm just gonna give him. Um, ha- I was gonna half it. Oh, okay, okay. So, insight. He doesn't have a perception. What? If he's if unconscious, no perception he cannot he perceive. Just use wisdom. Uh, just use wisdom. Yeah. So whatever their wisdom score plus ten is their passive perception. Okay. Not so the score, then the modifier, not the score. <laughs> so like the plus three or whatever. It's, so he beats you by one. <laughs> by one. So close. I'll let you roll with advantage. Because it's funny. That's much better. I got a 21 with advantage. Okay. Went from a four on the die to an 18 on the die. <laughs> so what happens is he... He stirs and you stop. You freeze. You're like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. But what happens is he just rolls over and pulls the covers up. And you get to um, snooping. Roll me investigation. All the dice rolling today. Very happy so far. Oh, no. Uh, Okay. Uh, So that is... A flat 10. Flat 10. Okay, Um, tell me where you think he would be looking. Like, there's there's probably, uh, he's got like a desk, a writing desk in his room. There are definitely bookshelves. There's the nights, the nightstand. So, I, I think you had already described that he, uh, Vixtriction had put his glasses on the nightstand, right? Mm-hmm. So, I think with a 10, um, Arev would have gravitated over to the nightstand and picked up the glasses and just sort of hung them from the his the collar of his shirt and then maybe maybe kind of poked around the nightstand a little bit. Okay, you poking you're poking it right just right right beside his head, huh? You are <laughs> ballsy. Well, I'm just um, you know, he, he picks up the glasses and then he just kind of doesn't even realize but he sort of whispers he goes, "Pretty sure these were mine now." And he, like, puts them on his shirt. You're still wearing that pair. So I have a second pair? Yeah. Oh. Remember, he he took his pair off and he gave them to you. And then another pair appeared. As he tries to put it on, he realizes the second pair is, like, on his shirt. He holds up both. He goes. Okay. And he puts, puts them both, them both. Down. <laughs> Starting a uh, connection. You open the drawer. And as you open the drawer, there are a collection of, like, papers. I'll say you find... (laughs) I'll say you find a collection of papers. And with that, when you grab one of them, you actually do get bitten 
and you take one HP of damage as it is a weirding scroll. It's alive. And it bites. So something you can look up. You can look that up. I, I don't have to. I, I, I was just pretending I got a paper cut, but getting bit is better. <laughs> yeah. D and as you kind of like jump, you you hear is one of my glasses not enough for you? I mean, well, the expression is that it is a pair of glasses. So now I just have a pair of a pair of glasses. It's really just the next logical step, don't you think? So you come into my home, you eat my food, you sleep in my bed, and then you steal from me. No, technically these were given to me. Um, he it's just that... out. He reaches out and pulls the extra pair off of your but, shirt. See, but that's not fair. Because, like, time doesn't exist here. So, in all fairness, that could be the pair that you have promised to me, either in the future or the past, depending on where we actually are in time. And you took my pair from me just now, which means you, in fact, are the thief. Just saying. He doesn't say anything to that. He just opens up his glasses and puts them on. Is there something that you're looking for? I? No, not specifically. And that's the truth. Do you have any secrets from me? Millions. I'm a devil. I'm a half devil. I'm half demon. Do you have any secrets from me that are relevant? To what situation? To ours. See, the devil's in the details there. To ours? You and me? Or to why you're here? Perhaps why your friends are here? If you have No, that's not what I want to say. McStrickson, if you are so quick to publicly announce that you are mine, or rather that I am yours, then by extension, when I say ours, I mean that I include you in what I already have. And that would be extend to to my friendships and my companions and those that I care about. Um, maybe not this new Elewin. You will treat her with respect. I don't know her. I will treat her with respect. I always do. I'm just saying that as far as... Do you? And you d you think that turning someone into a penguin is respectful. <laughs> what? Hmm. You hit the blood wine a little, little hard last night. He gets out of bed. I mean, if anything, the best way that I could see that going was that I thought that I was playing a practical joke. And if I take somebody that I barely knew and I include them as if I've always known them in the joke that actually is respectful because I'm respecting well yeah I'm respecting them enough to treat them like they're part of my friends I don't think I'd like to be friends with your friends
You should be so lucky, sir. I'm not there. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I don't want to mm. be friends with him. He, you see him walk across the room, put on like this very lavish house coat, do it up. I pay rapt attention while he does so. <laughs> he does so every muscle, just like yes, yes. He's very good looking. He is, he is absolutely gorgeous. Um, when he's done, fixes his hair and he turns to you. Breakfast. Or are you not quite done looking through my things? No. I mean, the most important part of this room is about to leave it, so I may as well go with it. Them. Uh, give me... A, give me a perception check. Ooh. Okay, much better. Uh, 22. You catch just the barest hint of a grin on his face. Uh, and when you walk over to him, he takes your chin in his hands, makes you look at him, and then leans in and gives you a uh, kiss before letting go and opening the door. After you. And they say that I'm the Circle of Stars Druid. Yeah. <laughs> um, in your head, for the first time since you've gotten here, you hear Varian's voice as he makes fun of your horrible, horrible pun. <laughs> Wait. That's the best you can do, boy. Jesus. I thought I raised you better. Shut up, Barry. No, no, go on. Uh that suddenly Mislin speaking. Go on and, and place me in place me in on something that I can watch. Or like a mirror. Do the kiss your kiss. Just arrange it better. And then he snaps his fingers and Miss Lynn is quiet again. And you see him just rub his temple. You ever considered letting her out? She might be less of a problem. I'll let her out when our, dear, when our deal is fulfilled. You, I, I walk like to the door frame. But then, like, as I've moved past him, I, I sort of brush my arm along his, but then, like, lean ever so slightly against the frame itself without actually, like, leaving. I'm just kind of standing in the door. And I look back. And I go, are you ever going to tell me what the deal is? Yes. Right before I need you to do it. So you expect me to just blindly be as prepared as I need to be to fulfill what you want from me? Yes. I hope that works out for you. It will. It will. It will work swimmingly. Now come along. Or I've like makes a mental note. He's like, it's going to have to do something with swimming. He said I'd have to do it swimmingly. Okay. Oh, God damn it. Alaywin. <laughs> Is there he, anything that you're doing this morning? Um, I think she'll spend the morning kind of trying to uh, figure out if, like, obviously I think in the back of her mind she knows that like these people are telling her the truth that like the Alewin here is like gone gone but she's trying to see if she's missed any details in her research and just kind of combing through everything to kind of keep the the mental juices flowing essentially um but yeah 
that's that's pretty much all she'll she'll do this morning and once she gets a little frustrated she'll uh make her way out to the table for like you know i imagine i imagine you opening the door just ah, like just a little annoyed Mm -hmm. just as winter is passing it and you see him just kind of like jump for a second because that was not what he was expecting (laughs) at all and he's just like i'm sorry i will walk quieter next time (laughs) it wasn't you it was not you and she does like slam her door closed (laughs) which is comforting for sure and she just like starts walking okay Uh, and he you can he he, you 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 can just by like listening you can hear that he doesn't start walking after you and you've gotten like (laughs) a decent step like few steps ahead and then and then it it, there's just small shuffles like just like yeah yeah Uh Uh, he's smart he's smart man she's yeah she's she's probably pretty pretty ticked off right now so like yeah you all make it to the breakfast table the it is full with um i mean the eggs are green and speckled um (laughs) There's ham. No. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Um, you know, everything is breakfast foods. They look Mm -hmm. like breakfast foods to you. You're not entirely sure what things are made of again, but it's food. Last night was good. It was edible. So. And Dilly's been down there. She's in there when you get there. (laughs) You're all here just fucking (laughs) mowing. Oh, yeah. Perfect. Uh, Rev uh, turns the corner and looks down and sees Gilly scrubbing him down and goes, Nice. Hey, Gilly, can I pass some of that fake in and, and some of that spam? Dig in, mate. Perfect. It's like weird, but kind of good. Also, uh, uh, this, this yellow fluffy stuff is this like scrambled bags? That's sweet. You wouldn't think it, but that one's sweet, actually. Huh. I uh, that's Ooh. That's like an experience <laughs> in your mouth. It's a Fluffy. plant of sorts. It's a plant. Mm-hmm. I know quite a few people who'd like to move here, I think. Would you? Would or do you, sorry. Do you? Are here. They... <laughs> here in the big dimension. <laughs> the scenic I... hell. <laughs> Has it been so painful so far? Don't say that loud. Uh, do you want to do an insight check? We've actually seen the castle. Yo. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. Aw. Uh, well, my insight's a plus nine, so that's a 12. Enough to see him as he takes a drink of, like, maybe possibly a coffee-type substance and go, mm-hmm, that's coming up. <laughs> like... <laughs> Great. Uh, nobody thinks emotional trauma is pain, right? Definitely not. Uh, is there anything that you would like to talk about, or are we just gonna move through our our breakfast? Think. Okay, so you oh, guys. If anybody eat. wants chocolate, you can have some chocolate. Oh, I'll take some chocolate. Yeah. Box over. Wait. Just a little breakfast treat. It's okay. I, I don't need anything else because Gilly and Arev already had their meat. Cute. <laughs> hey. <laughs> uh, the cunning does take a piece of chocolate, um, and eats it, and like turns away to be like wow this is horrible but like you can see it he's just like this is the best thing i've ever eaten i love chocolate (laughs) bargaining chip Um, how many of those do you have (laughs) right Uh, you guys have all gotten your items right bargaining chocolate chip uh we went oh we went through the items did you choose which ones that you were going to take because he's about to just leave a bunch put a bunch of items on table and say Take your pick. Have a pick. I don't think um, we negotiated have... amongst ourselves. All right. 
So let's see here. We have a wand of magnific- magnificent mansion, um, a scroll of private sanctum, syringe of Jax, the oil of Ethereumless, which I think was claimed by Damascus, yeah, um, a plus two Bellman Bellman chain whip. I can't talk today, and a key dagger. Uh, if I take the scroll, I can learn the spell. So, take yeah, take the scroll. Yeah. I was eyeing the syringe of Jax. I don't know if anybody else was into that idea. I I kind of like the key dagger, but I'm also kind of down for the, the wand of a uh, magnificent mansion. But like the thing is, uh, that says caster's bard wizard. So I don't think I can actually use the magnificent you mansion. Can, you can use it. I don't give a shit when when it comes to like magical items. You guys can use it. It's fine. Oh, great. Okay. So um, I mean, if, yeah, if so I could take you have... two, hmm? I said if if I could take two and nobody is down for either of them, I could take the the key dagger and the the wand. Sure, oh, you can I take think. two if you want. Uh, there's also then the bellman's whip, which uh, let's be honest. Um, the only one who might use that is Faza if she's used all her spells. Maybe not. No, she's she's yeah. Faza takes it. So Faza will take the the bellman's <laughs> chain whip. Um, other that's than extremely that, extremely aesthetic for Faza to have. Mm-hmm. That's a good goth girl weapon. Yeah, that is a good goth girl weapon. Yeah. And and have, winter is worried. more. Yeah, you should. <laughs> Looks over as Faza's like. Flexing the whip with this like <laughs> grin, crack, crack, crack. and like glint in her eyes, and I go, "No, I, th- I think you should be excited." I read a passage <laughs> in the first <laughs> in the first Goblins in Love that I would like to try later. Um, anyways, and then you see Winter just like okay. I, I just need you to never talk about that book again <laughs> in the back of a rev's mind varian's just like <laughs> yeah for the poor boy um and you guys gather up uh you, before you leave um this Inimus is there as well uh Vistriction puts on a ring and you see Inimus begin to um almost decorporealize and then eventually fade into that ring fascinating so that like y- y- you get give me um give me an intelligence check okay. um okay. yeah 19 in total 19 okay you you definitely get the uh, you get the feeling that you're not coming back here. Great. Okay, okay, cool, cool. Um, has um, she seen this before? The the ring like that? Uh you know you've seen him put souls into pieces of jewelry before, okay. but they don't stay there long normally. Mm-hmm. Um unless it's a punishment or a bargaining chip, such as awesome. uh Mislin. Gotcha. Okay, okay, okay. Um and he takes you to an empty room. It's in the basement of his house. Uh he takes a small ring off his finger and he tosses it onto the ground and in the blink of an eye um a portal appears. Uh it's a gaping black hole in the ground. Uh, the borders, it's like, it's bordered by like an ominous, like, uh, ring of pulsing red energy um, that seems to almost feel hot in a sense as well. Um, you can't see through it. It's impossible to see what's on the other side. Uh, but the side of it just, it, it itself sends uh, shivers kind of down your spine. Uh, it makes the hairs on your back of your neck stand up. Like, like this is wrong. Yes. Question. Does yes. the red energy look like the red energy that we saw from What's-Her-Face's thing before we got pulled into here? It looks very similar. 
Yes. Uh Um, And as you kind of like peer into that uh, abyss, um, an intense gravitational pull starts to draw and pull on you and pull you through. Uh, or pull you towards it to where Vestrixen tells you uh, to jump in. He's like, well, let's go. If we're going to get Rananel back, this is the quickest way. Should we, like, hold hands or something? Sure. Uh, Rev, like, reaches for Gilly. Uh, Rananel just walks through. Yeah, well, (laughs) before he walks through, um, Alewin will, like, exchange a glance with them. Like With a, him? what? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just kind of like, oh, okay. I'll tell you on the other side. Mm-hmm. She'll go. I guess this is our way out. Grab Faze's hand. I grabbed Damascus's other hand, so now we're linked. Thank you. <laughs> Buddies. Winter grabs his own hand. <laughs> Winter just Winter just like fuck you guys and he walks through on his own. <laughs> oh, what a, Billy reached out. I didn't have any hands left. He just he, he just walks out. Hanging. Oh, did he? Did you say that did you put your hand out for yes, him? I did. Oh, then he would have taken it. Okay. He would have because he wants to feel <laughs> included at any cost. Of uh, course. And, and you guys jump through this portal. Um and it kind of just feels like it something grabs you around the navel and like pulls you really quickly through there and then no oh, thank you make a yeah, death not, not throw. Not <laughs> what the one a natural one okay you land on your ass was my <laughs> first roll on my gilly dice thank oh, you oh i'm so sorry <laughs> five okay. that's right okay. for it okay i got a six <laughs> also on your ass and okay. for damascus oh, nine for phaser Everyone, what about Winter? Great, everybody. Putting on their ass. Great sign. The DC was 12. Well, oops. You're bad at dice. Everyone lands on their butt. Yep. Yep. And we we are not a dexterous party. You guys are all in a massive heap on the floor. Um, You guys get up, I'm assuming. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Ow. Ugh. Why did he not warn us about the ball? Uh, I hate portals. Are they all like this? I've only been through two and they're both very uncomfortable. The portal behind you, by the way, gone. What's the ground? Putting a ring back on his finger. What's the ground made out of? Uh, It is made out of stone. Let me explain to you what you are uh, are immediately assaulted with as you get out of this uh, portal. Your senses are immediately assaulted by heat and the sense of sulfur emanating from the chasm below. The sky is dark, the only light coming from the river of lava below you. Looking around, you see that you are standing on a narrow platform jutting out from the side of a steep mountain with a portal with the, with the portal no longer at your back in front of you is a long stone bridge that stretches over molten over a molten river of lava its surface slick and treacherous the bridge is narrow barely wide enough for two people to walk side by side um with no railings to hold on to across the chasm near uh near um you see a series of giant skulls lining the wall of the mountain in front of you, um, having been carved into it. Each skull is easily the size of a small house. Um, their empty eye sockets stare at you with a cold, with cold, lifeless gazes, and their skulls look as though they have been there for centuries. Um, When you get up, Elaywin, he looks at you and says, You've seen Vistrixen, uh, you've seen Rananel come home with injuries on him from time to time. Yes. Yes. The demon in here has decided he's. Rananel will be his, and he's gotten a little handsy. 
And now he's taken Rananel. And obviously that doesn't sit well with me. No. What's your plan? Well, we're going to kill him. Yes, but I didn't know if you had some clever, clever ruse in your head already. Well, I'm hoping he's not home. We can just walk in, take him and walk out. Ideally. Um, I don't know in what state Ranana will be in mm. when we find him. Well, you better figure it out. Um, and she'll, she doesn't know where she's going, but she just like starts <laughs> going. You start going. Is there anything that you wanted to say, uh, James? Because you were asking about the ground and all of that. Oh, I just figured it'd be funny if like, it was made of ash or something. And then a rev would just be like, <laughs> like, like literally got landed face first in a pile of ash and was just spitting it out. But if it's stone, less funny. There's probably it's ash stone. on the stone. Let's be real. It's it hell. is stone. Yeah. How do I? Oh, there we are. That's how I move you guys over. You should be able to see the area right now. Where you will be fighting. Hey, we don't know. They might be gone. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's not him that I've been waiting for you to fight. It's what's outside here. <laughs> oh, <laughs> good. Um, so. Um, I still see the yes. bugs. I Yeah, we still see huh? the bugs. What do you mean? The we canyon bugs. bugs. Did you oh my goodness. Okay, there did that update? There we go. Yes, Ooh, I see giant skulls that's now. That's cool. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, mm-hmm. so. Have to fight the skulls. <laughs> Wait, there we is missing, um, possibly very injured. And for the first time since you've gotten here, uh, the cutting is like, I'm about to, like, it, it, he's not really very business. Now he's like, I'm about to murder someone. I don't think you've ever seen this side of him, um, Alewin, but he's strutting past our onto the bridge and making his way to the other side. Do you assume we're supposed to be following him without action? Okay. I stay like with we're him. on another mi- rescue mish. I stay I with him like five feet of him at all times. <laughs> <laughs> Do you run up? So you run up after him? I'm hot on his heels. You're hot on his heels. Okay. Hot, so hot on his hot heels. Here on his hot, hot heels. You guys place yourself here where you think you would be on the I'm map. So- I'm sorry, Carol. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, no, it's fine. What was she saying? Oh, yeah. I, just, I hope it goes better than the last one. We don't have the Re- best track record. Refreshing. So a rev t- turns hearing you, Gilly, and says, just kind of like, Direct eye contact and nods very decidedly. Uh, what is this? Close that. We don't need that. Um, okay, so you've crossed this. You've crossed this bridge. It's about 40, 40 to forty-five feet long. Um, once you cross the bridge. The entrance to the mountain is visible. Um, it's a dark opening in in the stone that's shaped like a giant maw, like a giant jagged teeth, a mouth of teeth, right? So like so creative. Um, the entrance is wide enough for only one or two indiv- individuals to enter at a time, uh, making it like a tight squeeze. But before you can get there, no. <laughs> You hear a soft bray. <laughs> and three figures that get answer at the head of the mountain. I need you to understand what you're fighting. Let me describe it. With a tongue dripping and barely able to stay in its mouth, this muscular humanoid, gray, black-skinned, um beast 
comes out. It's an oversized head, the head of a donkey, and it has the body of a man. Um, it's monstrous huh? tongue lolls from its head from side to side, and at the end of its of its um arms are crimson or crab crimson crab like pincers that snap together with intense intense force and it goes <laughs> i've been waiting for this for so long back up do that again but back up a little bit because you cut out you want to hear the hee haw again well, I didn't hear <laughs> we didn't hear it it clipped <laughs> better Good enough. i can't go loud <laughs> Let me, I need to show you the picture now. Uh, because <laughs> Is that a when I demon? saw this, I lost I lost my shit. And donkey I was crab like, demon. You guys, you, there was no not fighting this. I feel like this is like that theory where everything turns like, to crabs eventually. Even donkey <laughs> yeah, demon. Right? Fuck. That is what's running at you right now. Why does it look Why? like that? It's got drool coming off its tongue, piercings in its donkey ears. Even its little nips are pierced. <laughs> and he's like, <laughs> Gray modeled flesh. Oh, I don't like that. Loin, loin cloth. Loin cloth. Oh like, my God. Uh, Mr. Strixon, did... by any chance, did you get the whip from this thing? Because uh wouldn't surprise me. How did he tie mm-hmm. the loincloth with the claws? That's <laughs> a good question. That's the real question. <laughs> um, I'm concerned about that. Following him, two humanoid-shaped devils with red skin and sharp barbed spikes protruding from their body move towards you. They're about six feet tall and have a m- muscular builds. Each have a pair of wings that allow them to fly. Their faces are twisted into identical wicked grins, revealing sharp fangs. Their eyes glow red and their tails have very long and thin uh, stinger at the end. They tied the link clothes. Yeah, that's how they got got, He's got manservants, that makes sense. (laughs) His little buddies. Aww. (laughs) (laughs) I'm dying. Everyone roll for initiative because there's no way you can. Oh boy! Really, we can't charm him and get him to let us pass. Seems like a reasonable. We have chocolate. (laughs) Uh, Winter. Uh, Winter's rule. No, I need a. Twenty-three. Twenty-three for Gilly. Nice. Okay. Winter has a nine. Nine. Winter is fucking like what is this uh phaser <laughs> phaser got a uh 11 11 uh damascus damascus got a 17 and i would like to ask if i had time to cast armor of agathis on myself before we did this uh, like as we as what as, is, went you, forward. as you were walking across you did that yeah. um yeah. a rev 12 12 oi they a lay one 26. 26. And the citizen rolled a 21. Because you always want your time wizard to be first in the initiative, right? (laughs) Uh, We're still technically in hell, right? So I don't. Oh, my God. Uh, I'll lay win. Mostly. You are first. I'll give you. uh, This is our right here. Can you guys see the the D? The demon, the demon did this. <laughs> uh, I can see the purple one in front of a rev. Yeah, okay. I just see uh, one. No, no, no that that is the Strixen. Oh, oh that just Strixen. kidding! I'm scrolling up. Never mind. Right here, That's right here, right the... here. Yes, oh, yeah, yeah. The green and the green I'm, one yeah. is your is your pincer donkey. D- donkey. <laughs> donkey <laughs> okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, you go. Okay. You Let's go. Uh, 60, 60. <laughs> I don't know why I didn't just use the tool. I'm sorry. I had to count that out and make you all wait for it. No, I no, totally fine. I, I do it every time. Count the spots. And I was like, wait, there's tools for that shit. 
Um, okay, so I am just yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Um Lewin is going to try not to hit everybody else. So she's gonna move. Ready. I'm gonna move my full movement up and then we are going to cast a I apologize. Um he's gonna be a dexy sucker isn't he let's give it a go let's give it a go um can i get a dex save from our uh newly acquainted donkey friend as she um starts to cast <laughs> vitrolic sphere i can't do it i can't <laughs> not laugh while i'm I doing this <laughs> But I, I was so excited to do this. <laughs> uh, Barley Demon. Let's see here. Barley. Bal Ballery. We Bal love it. I don't know. Donkey Fuck Demon. Mom. Just Donkey Demon. Death save. 22. Oh, boo. It's fine, though. Um, yeah, she's not close enough to so every bark. Never mind. Yeah. A creature takes another. On a successful save, the creature takes half the initial damage. So he still takes half of uh, 10d4. So give me just a second. 10, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, 6, 7. Eight, oh, cool. Nine, he has ten. advantage on this. And that's awesome. He has magic resistance for later. Amazing. Uh, so he will still take uh, 11 points of. Poison, acid. Sorry, <laughs> wrong, <laughs> wrong icon. Um, so eleven points of acid damage as she wheels Ooh. like a bowling ball. Essentially, is kind of what my brain is thinking. So you like start this like bowling ball size of acid in your hand or poison, poison or acid, acid. Emerald acid streaks explode. Emerald acid streaks. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you roll it at him, and he kind of deftly dodges out of the way with a. <laughs> but then you catch like the end of his tail as he takes eleven acid damage. Uh, and you hear. I'm not going to be able to do this. It's not your turn. <laughs> I love that. Um, yay. Beep, 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 beep. Yes, it is my turn. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Uh, Gilly. Okay. Um, I've got to figure out all of my things that I'm doing. First of all, I'm going to rage. Let me find my little magic table. I've got to go to all my different tabs to find all my different things because my magic things are in different places. Where's my yeah. world magic table? There it is. Okay. So first of all, I teleport up to 30 feet. Oh, okay. Shit. Um, oh, see. shit. Hey, I can teleport every turn until my rage ends. This is dope. <laughs> okay. So where do you 30, 30 feet, feet forward? Yeah. Um... So like right there. Nice. Bam. Gilly's there now. Oh shoot. I can get my other tool. Gilly's there now. Uh perfect. So how far am I now? He looks at you and he just starts. <laughs> now 60 feet away. Excellent. Okay. Um I think for my tentacles, I must go even closer. But let me check. Once again, I need to make, I need to just print all of this stuff out. Tentacle of Deeps. Mm, within 60 feet. Okay, no, we're good. Um, So Tentacle is going to appear right next to Donkey Man. Okay. He's going to, I liked it like bursting out of things last time. So it's going to come out of the giant skull eye. Okay. He's just going to like, hello. Um, and make a he little. He is very confused. Attack. <laughs> yes. Uh, full damage on a hit. So let's see. Let's see if I hit this fella with my tentacle. Probably not. Well, nine plus five, 11. No, that's not right. 14. I can do math. You miss. Okay. That's fair enough. It's still startling. You I go to, you, this tentacle donkey. comes out, you go to hit him and he just grabs it with one of his pincers and redirects it 
Rude. Always next time. Okay. Um, in that case, I'm gonna continue another 40 feet. Let's see. Let's go up. What's that? 10, 20, 30, 40 up here ish. So I'm still not in melee range, probably. What am I gonna do? I have spells I can do. I'm gonna do Acid Splash. Get wrecked. Splash. Okay. Um, so that's a deck saving throw. Okay. Let's do this, what is Mr. My... Demon. And this, the 13 is the DC. Uh, he rolled a 14. Okay. Well, he is a dexterous motherfucker. <laughs> You see him, Fine. you know how he dodges it? He fucking full on crab walks uh uh right out of the way, just like <laughs> from <laughs> Futurama, <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's so ugly. <laughs> it's so ugly. So my... His tongue is hanging down the whole time and he's like <laughs> I've got this like giant, like swirly green bubble of acid that I conjured and it just like splashes off the wall. But I get a second attack, so I'm gonna do it again. Do it again. Ah, there we go. Fourteen plus five is what to hit? Yes, nineteen. You hit. <laughs> Got a bad at bad. Okay, in that case, um. Oh wait, no, I didn't make a spell attack. You make a dex throw again. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So That's let's not do right. this. Seventeen. Okay. He Fine. crab walks back <laughs> under it. Just the tongue is like dragging on the floor and he's just God, fucking magic. This is why we use pointy things and hit people with them. Uh is that your turn? Uh yeah, I think so. Yes. Vistrixen. What is he gonna do here? It's Vistrixen's turn. He's not fucking around. So he ends up. Let me just check and see. Sides. You see him disappear and end up right like 50 feet closer to you at, to the fight towards Gilly and the uh, demon. Uh, and then he can move. So, 1, 2, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. He can get 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. He can get right up here to its face. And I think that's all he can do this turn. Let me check. Um, innate spell casting requiring no yeah casting a spell just because it's innate doesn't mean you can write down just because it's innate doesn't mean you can it's still an action yeah cool so he's right up in this guy's face and here's but here's what you see he takes one of his necklaces from around his neck rips it off and kind of as it falls as it falls uh like slips out of his hand a bit it becomes a very large, heavy flail. Ooh. This man's got such a good jewelry collection. <laughs> right. I'm impressed. It's actually called the Scourge of Avarice. So, um, greedy mother. And he's he's getting ready to <laughs> fuck some shit up. Uh, Damascus. Okay, Damascus will go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven now, because I have better speed. Oh, eight. I have 40 foot speed. Love it. Eight. Uh, which I'm hoping, let me just double check my range, puts me within 60 feet of this guy. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> I have a question. You described mm-hmm. him as being a big, mostly naked donkey demon with... Yes. And I believe your quote was pierced nips. Yeah, he's got pierced nips. 
I cast fourth level heat metal on his pierced <laughs> nipples. <laughs> <laughs> you hear him, you hear him like, <laughs> oh god, he likes it. <laughs> oh, I did not I did not expect him to like that. This, this, and this um, oh, you can, you, <laughs> it'll it'll only do half damage. That's fine. I'm mostly doing it so that he has uh because he can't drop it, so he can't try and drop it. Um uh, but he has disadvantage on attack rolls and ability checks as long as I keep using bo- bonus action to hit this. You see, you see him take his pincers and just rub his nipples for a second, like. <laughs> oh, I don't like that he's enjoying this. But at least he's distracted. Damascus, you, 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 plus distraction. You see a rev kind of stumble briefly behind you, <laughs> and, and you 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 just you just hear him say as he braces himself, he goes, "It's like." A million voices suddenly cried out at once and were silenced. <laughs> There's a disturbance in the voice. There's a oh. disturbance in Twitch. <laughs> it's disturbing. <laughs> um, okay, let me just do, 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 do. The, the crab claw demon donkey faced <laughs> thing <laughs> liked the heated nipple rings. <laughs> Into nipple oh. rings. Is a sentence <laughs> I never thought I'd say. <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons. Do you understand why I was so excited to play this guy? You were excited I for heated nipple rings? <laughs> oh, boy. General. Uh, it was uh, 16 halved to 8. <laughs> as he, as he, he takes that 8 damage, caressing his nipples. Mm. Oh, that's, that's, that's not what I wanted to happen. All right. Um, I will then throw a bardic at Arev. Arev, uh, can we just put this thing out of its misery, please? I will do my best. Appreciate it. <laughs> and that's my turn. Um, okay, hang on. Let me read something. If it likes the nipple ring heating, it gets hasted. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, here's how does this work? Uh, okay, cool. So from from its perch up upon the uh giant skull, this red barbed devil over here looks at you, Gilly, and these two giant. Balls of flame begin to grow in its hands. Right, right. And you hear this like almost it's it's definitely demonic. It's but the laugh itself is like a rasp, but still sounding very wet. Oh, love that. Like, like we're going like smokers, smokers uh cough, laugh. Ooh. And it's going to hurl these balls of flame at you. Um, like a fireball? But, yeah, it's, it's like, almost like a fireball. It, um, it's got plus five to hit. So, seven. I don't think this is going to hit you, period. Twelve is not going to hit you. I get fucked. But then it hits you with... No. Oh, that's that's going to hit you. <laughs> so uh at 24 yeah okay so it launches one ball of fire at you and you kind of dodge out of the way and then but then the it and was then I yell, get for... fucked, and then while i'm yelling get fucked the other one hits me <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was aiming for that for you with that, that one right. and you take nine fire damage Oh, that's oh, okay. Okay, okay. It okay. didn't do, too much. <laughs> it didn't do I was too like, much. oh, I think I'm in range to like counterspell, but then it was like, we're good. <laughs> it, it, it only it only does three d six. Like the, okay, I'm looking yeah. at some of the shit. I'm like, what is why why would you even want to make those attacks? But <laughs> well, that's that's its turn. Okay. Then we come to our 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 donkey demon, <laughs> and he's gonna do some shit. So oh, good. Two, 
distances to three demons and 30 feet each. Okay, so what, what it's about to do is it it kind of like stomps on its feet like you know you've seen like those horses at uh at a show where they're like prancy for a second it prances um except it's a man and oh, i hate it and then it it uh it rubs its nipples and it goes <laughs> <laughs> and uh it praises it has praising brays which uh as a bonus action it does and those two of uh, its two buddies now have um advantage on their first ability check or attack roll that they make oh it, even itself so it could so oh. it it at least for one of its attacks it's canceled it out um that's rude that are targeted okay <sighs> then because who's who's close here who's here 20 feet not yet i don't think no it's not going to do it yet uh it's gonna make its attacks on the strixen and he's going to <laughs> he's gonna make are you smart are you smart doesn't seem smart. you're not dumb <laughs> okay hang on i'm gonna make a roll for him Okay, he doesn't think about it right now. He's going to make his attacks on Vestrixen. Let's do this. He's going to do a bite and a pinch. That is a 16 plus 11 <laughs> Vestrixen. <laughs> that hits. Um, Next, that, let's see, plus 11. Um, that also hits then. Okay, he just winds up and grabs Vestrixen with one of his pincers, pulls him to him, and this massive donkey head of his bites into his shoulder, uh, doing uh, that is 20 piercing damage for the bite. Let's see. Can you... And 11 necrotic damage. Let's see. Let's see. Like, what can you do? 20... Damage resistances. Ooh, okay. Um, so ten, and I think you can still be necroticed. You can. So ten, and then eleven. And let me do the second damage, which is. Pincers. Let's see here. It's 11 more damage for him. And then what is this? If the Barley Squirrels, if the Barley Dean scores a critical hit against, ooh, never mind. Okay, an extra 11 damage for uh, the Strixen, who halves that as well. Okay. That is our Barley Demon's turn uh, a rev yes <clears throat> first question mm -hmm. how tall is the ceilings here if there are ceilings there are no ceilings you are outside shoot okay <laughs> hmm okay Wow, yeah, that definitely puts a damper on that plan. Okay. Um, I can't seem to like move my icon. I don't know. Why? Um, hang on a second. Let me why? Oh no. Are you on never the little mind. move tool part of it rather than like the measurement tool or anything? No, it's uh we, we got it. I'm okay. So okay. um five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five. 30. So I'll move 30 feet straight up to be beside Damascus. And then as, as I just move sort of like just in front of Damascus, um, I sort of 
grin at him and like tur- so quarter turn to look at him and go sorry close your eyes and then continue the turn as i start pulling radiance just from like the air behind him Ooh. and and i hurl a bolt a guiding bolt at level 1 straight across the field um which has a i think a 90 feet range um so i'm well within it to attack um mr green in the uh library with the candlestick over there mhm let's see um so that's a if you roll a 1 it's hitting destruction <laughs> <laughs> valid uh no that would be a uh oh my god i think that's like the seventh natural three i've ro- rolled all night oh my god oh. um i'm just having i i've changed the dice oh it's just your hands every roll my hands just keep rolling threes um but uh what is my modifier up to? it's a, that's a still a 14 to hit it doesn't hit damn you this bolt of just pure radiant energy almost hits Vistrixen as it like tries to as you try to hit uh the donkey demon and the donkey demon just kind of crabs down and it goes wide Vistrixen looks over his shoulder at you like like how fucking dare you (laughs) how dare you (laughs) but like and as that happens and Vixirxen looks back, yeah. I like quickly glance over at Damascus to make sure that his eyes are shut. Yeah. And then I look straight back and Vixirxen would see this concentrated look on Arev's face, this borderline rage as he's like looking past him with this steely look in his eyes. And then his entire body, from his eyes, which flare white, begin to spread constellation down until he takes on his starry form of the archer. And he simply raises a finger and points. And where the radiance just missed past, he slams his hands together and forces the radiance apart and rips it backwards using his shooting stars cantrip to try and uh, attack from... It's for flavor. I'm like shooting a radiant yeah. stars. You can't, <laughs> can't trip. But for flavor, I'm gonna like rip this radiance backwards um and try and hit again. Uh, that is a dirty 20 to hit. That hits. Okay, cool. So well damn. Okay. Uh that it uh t- t- uh Oh, wait, no, it, it wouldn't be my shooting stars cantrip because I use the action. Sorry, this is my um archer form thing. I, I rolled the wrong dice. I'm sad because I, I that would have been 32 damage. Um it's cool. just two d it's just two d eight plus five is what I should have rolled. So I got distracted. Um still not bad. Um so instead of 32 damage, uh it's going to be 12 plus 5, which is 17. 17 points of radiant damage. 17 points of radiant damage. Uh, as you shoot your donkey demon and he goes, like you see, you shoot him in the shoulder and he goes, his shoulder goes back and he brays. Uh, is that your turn? Not without winking at Vic Sturkson, it's not. <laughs> That's a bonus action. There's like a there's like a there's like a a look between like that was hot but also I'm busy. <laughs> and I look now. You used that botic I gave you, right? Oh, oh no. <laughs> no I, I just remembered uh, too. That's okay. Phaser. Uh, I didn't think I needed it. I'm sorry. Next time. <laughs> oh, it's all good. Uh Phaser will um she's going to move forward to be in range of this fight. One, two, three, four, five, six. Moving up next to Demon Elewin. Um, she will cast. Let me see the range on. No, I don't think she can get Yili. Uh, let me just check the range on something real quick. No, it's 30 feet. She can't get Billy. 
Uh, she will cast um, 25, 30, 35, 40, haste. 45, 60, 65, 70, 75, 80, 75, 80. Can I make a suggestion for phases uh, yeah, for phase of being completely vicious? Yeah, go for it. Uh, vortex warp is 90 feet if and that's 90 feet into the lava. She just has to place it on a surface. Wait. I'm not making any suggestions. Okay. Um, that's, a, that's a dumb suggestion. Don't listen that can to me. Support the target without... If that's a thing that she can do, then don't, yeah. Don't, don't listen to me. I totally... I feel bad now. Why do you feel bad? Because they're immune to fire. They're immune yeah. To fire. yeah. They're they're demons made of fire. She would I don't <laughs> no. Plus, how far down is that? No. Uh she'll cast haste on um a rev and Damascus. She'll twin spell it. <laughs> and so a rev and Damascus both have an extra action. And more speed. Cool. Cool, cool. Taste, taste, taste. Is that her turn? I don't think she has any relevant bonus actions. Let me just check. This is Damascus, not her. Bonus actions. Uh, I'm gonna show. What's the range? 30 feet. Nope. Yeah, that's her turn. Winter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Winter's about to smash. Uh, winter is missing as an icon. No, he's all the way back there. No, oh no, no. he's all he... the way back there. Oh gosh, he's so far away. Nobody has moved him. Uh, oh, where is he? Hang on, let me he... see. Let me see. He, well, he's at the back, like the back of the bridge. Oh no, he would have crossed with you. He crossed with you. We just didn't move him. Oh, right? okay, so it was like there. Okay, so then. Ah, you fool. <laughs> right, Ten, we have a we have a the only time he ever uses his wings is for things like I'll take uh, a Rev's child home. Yeah. <laughs> Hang on. He flies for RP purposes. It's great. Yeah. I mean he's he's flown a few times in combat, but like it's never been like super important. Um I, oh, goodness, I don't know what to do with him. Um, you know what? I think he's just going to uh, movement dash action dash. Just try and like really get into combat. So 10, 20, 30. He'd end up like right here. I think 30, 35, 40, 45, 50, 50, 50. He, he can, he can end up basically here, like 10 feet from Gilly. Yeah. So he just picks up his war hammer and, and hoofs it. Yeah. Forgetting that he could just fly over top of everyone like the wind. Um. Okay. Good, good turn I mean winter. Good turn. His his flight doesn't actually increase his movement speed. It just changes his type. Yeah, I think. Uh, let me triple check. Blown over flight. So yeah, yeah. It, it just is... it um his radiant soul ability, which is what allows him to have uh, two incorporeal wings. Uh, it lasts for a minute and. Uh, just allows you to have a flying speed of 30 feet but like it's not like you know like flying 30 movement 30 right it's not a bonus of 30 feet no yeah yeah our barbed devil over here the last one to go can actually get his butt down right here i believe Ooh, yes sure. right yeah right down in front of winter and he's gonna make three attacks he's going to do two with his claws and one with his tail 
let's see here. I mean, that one's the first one, okay? And and basically what happens is as he's landing, he goes to make a hit and just kind of gets stuck on one of his own barb and just falls. <laughs> uh, because why not? Um, then uh-huh. we're gonna change the third one. <laughs> and that's a two. So he just uh, like goes to get up, goes to scratch, still can't do it, and being um completely embarrassed by this he's gonna try and use his tail to pierce winter um and then he's gonna roll a lot better because <laughs> he shit uh 24 for winter for hits he needs this hits okay uh he does nine piercing damage okay uh and and then he, he writes himself and looks around like that no, that didn't happen. <clears throat> he didn't just trip over his own feet. Uh Alewin. Yeah. All right. Um Alewin is going to stay where she's at. And she is going to uh with my feature spell sniper, I don't have to get any closer and I can still uh cast shatter at fourth level and hit our red devil on the right there so yes. can i get a constitution saving throw from the red devil still yes on top you can of let me see i'm here mr devil the constitution's fairly decent uh let's see they have oh they have fuck i don't even need to make it he rolled a nat 20. Uh, oh, boo. So. And we're still definitely in hell, yeah? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> which, which one are you casting it on? Uh, the, uh, red the red one. one on, on, on the right. Uh, He's pretty far up On there. top of the skull. Five feet, what is... It's the range of silvery barbs. I don't know. Yeah. You hear that so gross, bad. rasping cough. No good. <laughs> like laugh. Ooh, just... Oh, so gross. <laughs> <laughs> um, nope. Uh, that was my one spell opportunity. The wizard's done. That's my whole turn. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry that didn't work. Oh. It comes it's okay. Some okay. Bonus actions. Uh, I do, have... but they're not like, there's not. For the Wait, wizard's isn't class, shatter half damage. Shatter's half damage. Shatter's oh half shit! Damage. You're right. Just kidding. <laughs> That's why I cast <laughs> it. LOL. Sorry, you guys. A little JK, JK, JK. <laughs> Hold on. Let me math. Uh, nine, uh, seventeen plus twenty-four. So twenty-four, twelve. Twelve points of thunder damage. So you're gonna see um of what damage? Thunder. 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 Um, okay. I was listening when you were like fire resistant. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're gonna see her uh like spark up a shatter and as it goes at him, um it's gonna sh- it's gonna shock him. That was uh, my brain just lost it. I was gonna explain it way cooler, but there we are. So what he takes twelve he... points of thunder damage. The initial the initial like explosion goes off and it doesn't he it doesn't bother him at all like it, it he stands there and he laughs and then there's like that aftershock that hits oh, him shit. and he you see him just <laughs> yeah and he takes awesome. the 12 bit of thunder damage there um gilly get okay, mad um, first of all okay so i had my i had my tentacle come out of the eye of that scully guy yes. and go for the donkey guy so i'm just gonna have the tentacle go up and try and go for the well, double guy that's perched on top. Okay. Let's see if we can do this. Oh, roll 17 plus 5. I'm guessing that would hit, right? 17 plus 5. Let me check his AC. Yeah. So that is... Yep, you hit. Eight. Okay. 1d8 of cold damage. 2 cold damage. Oh, Every baby. little bit counts. Yeah. <laughs> so that it's was chill. It's, it's a chill. <laughs> yeah. It's one cold damage. Oh, chilly. It's like, oh, I should have brought a jacket today. <laughs> um, okay, and then I'm going to <laughs> activate my Tempestuous Tides ability. Ooh. The power of the ocean surges through my veins. 
Bring it, bring it, bring um, it. And now I'm going to do some lightning damage every time I do something. And then, okay, so I'm going to use my little rage teleport thing. And I am just suddenly going to be stabbing this guy. So <laughs> I just appear and the stabbing is happening. All right. So you just Get appear wrecked. beside our our freaking donkey demon and yes. just go ham. Let's, and what that's do, a what 26 do do? to hit. You hit. Dodge this motherfucker. Okay. <laughs> Is this fellow a fiend? Does he count as a fiend? This fellow a fiend. I'm fairly certain he is. Let me check just to make sure. He's definitely a fiend. He's a demon. How derp. Do it. Okay. Do I get it. Extra up. 1d6 damage. Excellent. Um, so that. That. And then I will also obviously use my tidal surge ability with the trident. Um, Yay. So, okay, I'll do the damage first. Yes. And then we'll see if I push this fella back. Okay. Woo, that was nice. Not awesome rolls, but hey. Three, six. What's nine plus seven? Sixteen? Yeah. Sixteen damage. Sixteen okay, damage. So what type of damage? Just stabby stabs? Um, there's some bludgeoning, some piercing. So unless are those no, me, different in any let way? Me check. He is resistant to bludgeoning and piercing. Okay, shoot. Okay, so Does it say so we'll he's a non magical for... weapon? Oh um, he's resistant to both? Okay, we're good. From non-magical attacks. Oh, that's for, fair. Go ahead. Yeah, you're magic. fine. Oh, good. Yeah, okay. 16. Oh, yeah. Perfect. And then um, plus plus two would still be, be my proficiency, proficiency bonus, right? Level 10? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. So plus two lightning damage. Plus two lightning proficiency damage. Proficiency bonus is three. It's impetuous tides. Okay, so he takes... Proficiency bonus is four. Yeah, we're level 12. Proficiency bonus Okay, is it? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah. So you notice that you, you shock him? And it, yeah. but it, it doesn't, it's not as effective. Yeah. He takes like two damage out of that. Fair enough. And then, like a, I'm guessing not literal water, but like a spectral water, like as I stab, just kind of like prah, rushes at him, and he needs to make a strength saving throw. But an easy dip. He remembers it. Clearly not strong at all. He rolled a 24. <laughs> ah, <laughs> fine. <laughs> He just gets he's plus, he's plus 11 to strength, guys. Nice. Uh, donkey boy? Oh, yeah, boy. donkey boy's strong. Donkey boy's strong. Good for donkey boy. Is that boy. all your... No, I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> <laughs> do it again! <laughs> do it again! Love so it. I'm gonna just back up a little bit and stab him again. Um, that is, Did I roll the same thing last time? Just 20... 27? Yes. Really it. I love my trident so much. Okay, so that's 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. If you want to call it out, I have a calculator ready to go. So the 16 piercing and bludgeoning, and then the plus four are lightning. So okay. 18, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. 18. Zero for that. Oh, man. He is not happy at all. Uh, is that your, that's your turn? That's my turn. All right. So let me move on to Restriction, who now has this massive, uh, mace in his hands. And he's going to, he's going to attack. Um, let's see how well he does. That is, okay, that hits. And I'm going to see if the second one hits. And that is, uh, I don't think the second one hits eight plus five. Let's see here. Okay, so you, Vistrixen winds up and takes like two massive swings of his flail, uh, and the barley, barley, the whatever fucking donkey demon that we're fighting, uh, gets hit in the face once, and then, uh manages to get a claw up to block the second one and he takes 
He takes 14 damage from one hit. That's going to be pretty decent. Um, and I don't think the Strixon's going anywhere. I think he's ready to just freaking murder. Uh, Damascus. All right. <clears throat> Damascus will move a little more forward. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That does it. Uh, and he just runs into the uh, middle of the fray at 40 feet per turn. Shield up, sword behind him, and as he runs, he will um, flicker for a second and seem to disappear as light kind of pulses and then he almost like he runs into nothing and just vanishes and then reappears right in front of the uh, purple one, right in front of okay. the donkey demon, and then right in front of the red one up on top of this hill, like in super quick succession, just making a massive slash oh, at each of them as ooh. I cast uh, Steel Wind Strike! Steel, Steel Wind, Wind Strike! Strike. Just run through there, just choo, 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 like choo, choo, full choo. anime vibes. I was just about to say somehow that. Somehow in three stuck. places at once. You have a slight green glow as Bomb's magic flows through you. Oh, yes. I uh, that's so much. Attack rolls to see if I hit. Um, Epic! Plus 10. Okay, I've got a 17, 27, and dirty 20. We'll say the 17 was for purple guy, dirty 20 was for uh, donkey guy, 27 uh -huh. was for guy up on the hill. All hit. The red guy. All hit. Love it. That is 66 damage for each of them. Do I add the plus a d6 for my sword or not? Because this is like a spell, not an attack. Plus a d6 for undead or fiends? For fiends, fair, undead. Yeah. 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 Okay. Cool. So, purple guy, I think. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we 18, appreciate? Damascus. Damascus. <laughs> Yay, 27, Damascus. 27 for the purple guy attacking Winter. Wow. Shit. Okay. 27. This is much better. Jeez. Uh, six, 16. 8, 8, and 8 is 24, so already I'm at 40. 49. Uh, 49 damage to the donkey. Oof. I rolled very okay. high on that one. Okay. And then I reappear next to the guy in red up on top of this skull. Mm -hmm. And to him I do 13 plus 6 is 19, 20, 21, 25 damage to him. Yulun Strike is so cool. Damascus disappears and just de decimates so many of them. Oh my god, I love that. That was great. Love it. Well done. That's my action. That's my first action. Faze gave me a second. <laughs> uh, but I can That's only true. use it to attack. I attack him with my sword. I just make a regular old attack with my sword. Red guy up on the hill, does a 16 hit? Yes, it does. Love it. That's a D8. Completely D8? shocked that you're there. It doesn't understand where you came from. It's called magic. Uh, ooh, oh, and I rolled my next rolled an That hacking my... laugh is like... <laughs> uh, that is an additional 8 plus 4 is 12 plus 7, 19 damage. 19 damage. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Uh, oh, yeah. As my bonus action, I reactivate the heat on the donkey's nipples. <laughs> and you hear. <laughs> He's distracted. Get him. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, oh, fuck. Uh, 16, no, 12, 14, 15, 16. So another eight. Half it. That is halved. 
Oh, how does that? Eight. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's your I trick? I want one of the nipple things to kill him. I want that <laughs> to the nipple thing just off. <laughs> I've been rolling to see if he's smart enough to just rip him out. Because he would. He oh, would. Boy. He would have to do a ah. constitution. Uh, yeah, no. Um, that's my turn. Uh, it is the barbed devil's turn that you are now beside. And it's it's looking not too happy with you. Um, let's see. This. Hit me. Go ahead. Hit me. I'll give you a free shot. Okay, it's gonna hit you. <laughs> no. Let's see. It's gonna make three attacks. Good. Let it. Uh, let's see. Uh, the first one is a an eighteen to hit. Does not hit. The second one is an. Is it the best you got? Uh, 25 to hit. That's a little better. And then the tail's coming in, huh? That one hits. The tail's coming in uh, with a nat one, and it kind of hits itself, and it's like... um, (laughs) That Uh, is a sad display. it, It is cowed, and it only does seven damage to you. Cool. It also takes 20 cold damage as the armor of Agathix explodes. Little bits of ice just shatter into its face as it lashes out at me and the armor just shatters onto its face. It shatters onto its face and it just kind of goes and it falls off. Doesn't hurt it? Uh, It does not do as much damage as you were hoping it would do. It does some and I'll take it. Oh shit, I gave that to the barley demon and not... To our I still have 13 devil. temporary hit points left. Hit me again. <laughs> it is now our donkey demon's turn. And it let me just check this. Let me see. It is nicely surrounded. Let's see. So you're within 20 feet. 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay. And you, 5, 10, 15, 10, 15, 20. You're not, you're just out of out of range. But Vestrixen, uh, Gilly, and Winter are going to be dealing with this. Uh, it, you see it kind of it's bloodied. Its nipples are burnt. It's got <laughs> its nipples are burnt. Uh, it's got blood coming out of its mouth, and then it starts to like gargle that blood almost as it goes, yeah! and it sprays everywhere. Um, Gross. It it un- and this is. It unleashes an otherworldly braying that causes the internal organs of nearby creatures to twist and rupture. Each creature within 20 feet of it that can hear it make a DC 18 constitution saving throw. Good lord. 20 feet, you say? Yeah. So that's me, but not winter? Huh? That's me, but not winter, it looks like? It's, it's all it's when winter's in it as well, isn't he? Pretty winter's sure. 20, he's it's the green thing, right? Winter's yes. 25 away. Oh, okay. Ooh, so he's nice. just out of missed it. Out of reach. And I'm I'm 20, assuming that height doesn't count. You're 20. So you roll uh restriction rolls, restriction fails. Um and Gilly. I failed. You failed. Yeah. Okay. Wait, you failed too. Fail. I'm gonna use lucky. I like my organs. I'm gonna try again. Okay. I rolled so worse this time. This, One more lucky. This can only recharge on a six. I'm gonna roll it right now to see if he gets it back next turn. Which he does. Go damn All it. right. Um. Well. Which he does. And here's what happens. Uh, on a failure. A creature takes 8d8 necrotic damage 
and is stunned until the end of its next turn as it doubles over in agony. Um, on a success, the creature takes half damage and isn't stunned. The bray doesn't affect creatures without internal organs such as constructs and blah. So, uh, Restriction, like, immediately drops to his knees as he's ha- and grabs his heart as, like, his starts to, uh, I guess, liquefy. Yeah. Um, and he, and this is for everyone, you're taking 36 necrotic damage. Ow, this, ow, 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 Is ow, this a ow. spell or a feature? Like a... It's a feature. Ah, boo on you. <laughs> yeah, it's a feature. So let's see. Are you resist? You are not. Uh, he takes it fully too. Uh, Restriction just takes that damage. Oof, 36. And he is stunned and out. Uh, if I'm stunned, stunned, do I get a reaction? I don't think so. I don't think you can do anything. Ah. Can do it if you can do it now before, like in the as you're in the process of failing, you can have a reaction, but not after you are stunned. If that makes sense. Okay, I guess not then, because the reason I would get a reaction would be in response to being damaged. So I think I would already be stunned, probably. Okay, so everyone has taken. Uh, Dan, did you pass? I say I'm going to use my last lucky. This feels like it's worth it. Try. Yeah, this hurts. Ooh, this is not fun. Plus four. 20. 30, 20. 20. Okay, you take half? half damage. So Good. half of 36. I had to burn three luck points for that. Jeez. Uh, half of 36. I mean, eight. you really better hope there's no no other... <sighs> Seriously. Yeah. Uh, oh, shit. I'm reading a whole bunch of... Vestrixen got some other shit that I just completely fucking went over. Motherfucker. Okay, so anyways, uh that is our demon's action. As a bonus action, he um he lets out more praising braise for his buddies and himself to be have advantage on their next shit. He's like <laughs> and he prances. Um you gross motherfucker. A rev. Okay, so Arev watches as this thing brays from a distance in front of him. How's it looking? Um, it is looking bloodied. Okay, so then with with that sight and and watching Vixtrix and double over as well as Gilly and even Damascus like hit up on the cliff, Arev walks forward shimmering in his starlight form which remains in the archer constellation he walks forward until he has basically a clean line of sight on the uh donkey demon and he uh is going to pull amelia's bow forward and He's as he pulls it up to aim, he pulls his second hand forward and this time begins to form some starlight arrows in the bow, splitting them in the one arrow into a th- two more so that there are three knocked. And he just holds it up, turns the bow ever so slightly to look just past the form of Gilly and releases. Uh, which is a 24 to hit that hits okay so i need to release Twenty four points of radiant damage he takes 24 points of radiant damage he's still standing though he's still standing he's still then, standing i uh, he's going to pull the same trick um, as like as he's launched this arrow, he's gonna sort of like pull his bow back behind his head, and with his other hand, he's going to weave forward in the constellation of a bow, and then pull back just with his one hand and launch a following arrow, uh, okay. which is his starlight arrow. Um, 
that didn't roll the way I was hoping it would. <laughs> um, with a 14. That does not hit. Bardic. Okay. Oh, yeah. If you want. You it. have Bardic. I absolutely do. Um, which is a D8 right now, yes? Uh, it's a D10. Ooh. Oh, oh shit. When Bards get levels good. Bards. Okay. Um, D10. You're also hasted from Phasa if you want to make another regular attack. attack. I probably yeah. might if this doesn't do what I want. Um, so that would make it an 18 to hit? Yeah, that hits. Oh, sweet. Okay, so 18 hits. So that is another 14 points of radiant damage. Okay. Still standing. And so, like, barely, as, barely, as I've launched this uh, arrow with the p- pulling some radiance back and feeling that hasted motion, I simply spin Amelia's bow between my fingers and pull the physical object back and actually utilize its ability and pull a force arrow back Ooh. along its uh, along the string, not needing ammunition. And mm-hmm. I try to aim it straight for that lagging tongue that has been hit twice with radiance, and I release. Okay. And please fucking roll well. Uh that's a twenty nine to hit. <laughs> and nice. you skewer him uh, uh, as he was opening his mouth to go. <laughs> it's just right down his throat. Uh, that's nine points of force damage. Fuck me. He's choking on it. He's got liter- he's got four points, guys. He's got four points. He is choking on this thing. The next nipple thing's gonna get it. Mm-hmm. The next nipple thing's gonna Everybody get it. Everybody wait till my next turn. Don't do oh, anything shit. to hurt him. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, it's Faza's turn. I did the best I could. Uh, Faza will... Uh, damn. Um, okay. Trying to get like an angle on something for Faza here. All of her big stuff would hit other people. One, two, three, four, five. I can be collateral damage if I need to be. Yeah, you're always like, hey, get out of my space. I need to cast magic there. <laughs> <laughs> right? He has cantrips. She does. She does. Woo, cantrips. <laughs> uh, she's going to uh, help. Damascus by hitting the red guy with a uh, these guys don't look particularly smart she's going to try psychic glance at the red guy up on the, the horn, de- horn demon <laughs> the, the, the barb devil barb devil close enough okay horn demon barb devil same thing uh, the one next to Damascus uh, let me just make sure she's in range of that yes uh, it needs to make an intelligence saving throw. Uh, she's going to cast it at third level. Eight. Eight definitely fails. She takes seven d6 of damage. Or he takes. Worse. Of what type of damage? Psychic damage. Okay. Grab another d6. Ah. Oh my god, that is so many sixes. Murder, two, murder, murder. Three sixes, two fives, so it's uh, 18, 28, plus four is 32 psychic damage. Get wrecked! <laughs> so close. Psychically? Again, five hit points left. These guys are barely <laughs> holding on. Uh, she will then quicken spell a uh, fucking cantrip to kill the goddamn thing. Because honestly, honestly, yeah. uh, she'll quicken spell. What do you got? Um, <coughs> uh, she'll quicken chest spell, chill touch at it. Lich slap. Lich slap. She lich slaps it. A giant floating undead hand just springs forth from her and just whacks it in the face. <laughs> it was a. That's going to hit. Uh, 25 hit. That definitely hits. Uh, 3d8 damage. Just don't roll really good. Uh, 17. No, 11. Math is hard. 
that it gets smacked in the face and falls backwards, yeah. careening off of the skull, landing with a sickening crunch, and done. Got him. What I call teamwork, darling. You are dying right now. <laughs> Me? I passed. You passed. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. You only took half of damage and only felt yourself have a minor heart attack. There's a teensy weensy little one. I lost I five hit points. Total. Like a panic attack. Uh, I'm fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's winter's turn. It's uh, you, you had all of your organs internally rupturing, but you're like, I took an Advil. I'm fine. Yeah. I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> I don't have to go to the hospital. Sorry, is it? Sorry, you said it's winter. It's winter. Oh, yeah. perfect. Oh, he's ready to hit something. <laughs> Get him. Uh, so there's this uh, beautiful purple stumbly blade demon thingy right in his face, right? Uh huh. So this may be the literal pain dimension, but Winter looks at this thing. Just calmly, like, lifts his head and looks up. And as he exhales, there's this cloud of frost that leaves his chest. He's just... (sighs) And then... Turn you into dust. (laughs) He, like, drops the hammer onto the ground where it lays flat. And then just simply backhand grips it. Pulls it up grabs the second hand and then up over the chin swings uh attempting to like knock its skull upwards okay okay oh fuck off uh no winter that would be a 12 to hit for that one that does not hit All right. it, winter uh misjudges just how close he just how far away he is and it, and it swings up and completely misses but he does have two attacks Mm -hmm. so what he's going to do then is he's going to switch his grip and just pull it straight back down oh okay uh what the natural 19 plus like that's like 29 okay perfect and uh, this thing is also a fiend correct yes it is perfect so if i'm correct get him get him get him uh, you know what? As as with it going up, and when he misses, he just kind of gets this little like, like sarcasm, like tick out of his mouth, and he brings Veer's Forge Hammer up, and then he seriously just looks up and goes, "Now," and the entire mallet triples in size as it gets <laughs> coated in ice, like a giant, massive glacial ice block. And then he just pull, rears back, holding it with one hand, and slams the half so the whole boulder comes raining down with a smite uh, on the top of this creature's head. Uh, so that is what level be... smite are you doing? Um, he's he's pretty mad that he missed it in the first place, and everyone else has been absolutely awesome. So it's gonna be a third level smite. Okay. Uh, and. So that being said, that is a ton of dice to roll. Um, so I got 2d8 just off the attack itself. And then the Divine Smite, I think. Third level is three. No, third level is four? If it's a fiend? I think think so yes you add in i know you had an extra first fiend hang on five uh does it say in your five Divine five smite. daniel's yeah. been listening this whole time five five di- two d five dice two d eight for first level plus one d eight additional so third level would be four and then one for being a fiend uh, perfect so an additional five are good days. who counts five like this who I counts do. five like that well, because the one was an additional from a different source. Exactly. That makes sense. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's so, exactly why I did it. It's it perfect. From- <laughs> so the hammer itself deals magical bludgeoning and uh, plus 1d6 to the fiends are undone. So I need this plus. Be so many dice. Gilly's just like rolling around on the ground, writhing. 
but she takes mm-hmm. a little break to go, Winter, that was so fucking cool! Oh my god! <laughs> so- Visterson's <laughs> just coughing up fucking blood. <laughs> like... <laughs> So it's 15 off of the hammer alone. Uh, and then I need to roll the radiant damage. Okay. You want to put it all together for me? Sure. So 15. 8 is 23, 29. Uh, 31. 39 that's 40 points of damage nice winter gives this thing a massive concussion as it kind of wobbles and stumbles around still okay it's bloodied still alive uh is that his turn yeah i i feel like he would look at gilly Gilly and go thanks Thank you. Ah, yeah. You don't look really you you don't look so good. Um it, it, I'm so speaking of that bar devil. That's like a you're my next stop. <laughs> the barb devil is going to attack Winter back. Uh with a with three attacks, it's going to get a a 25 to hit. Hits. A 22 to hit, which I think meets it, beats it. It does, yeah. And then, oop! And then that does not hit. So, two attacks. Let's let's see. They, they, these are nothing. It's five piercing damage and then four piercing damage. It does yeah. nothing. Nothing! A lay win. Sorry, I was muted. Uh, hopefully, we're gonna roast that uh barb devil here and i'm gonna cast a uh third level lightning bolt if i can get a dex save from this guy choking on an arrow four points of dip four points of life left he gives oh i said the the barbed devil oh the barbed devil yeah yeah yeah. the one that winter just hit yeah 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 okay cool 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 dex is uh 20 so it's half it's okay. damage. He still, he still takes half damage. So uh, that would be half of uh, still be 4d6. So we'll give me just a second. Okay. Ooh, that was pretty good. This will be half. So uh, 20 points of thunder damage. Takes 20 points of thunder damage. Yeah. Um, and he's looking rough. Very rough. Yeah. They, okay. They're tanky. Um, oh. I already cast a spell. I can't do anything. Um hold on. I don't have anything I can throw. I can't don't have anything I can throw like over 50 feet. Um, never mind. My turn is done. Uh, uh that's it. Sure. you can throw next- shade over 50 feet. Oh, yeah. Shade, you throw shade. <laughs> you right. Shade, you right. Reaction. Stunned until the end of its next turn. Okay, Gilly, you are stunned. And you are stunned. Oh, so yeah. can my can my tentacle do anything? Uh no, you are unable ah. to to do anything. So now at the end of your turn, you're you're okay again. You can stand up. You're good to go. Uh. And then it's Vistrixen who can't do anything. It's the end of his turn. He can stand up. Uh, Damascus. Oh my god, actually? Yes. Yes! <laughs> I will activate heat metal. And how much does it do? Probably at least four damage. Four is the minimum that I oh no, have. Let's see. <laughs> oh, I uh, need this. <laughs> uh, 21 points of damage. Yeah, so he goes, this thing dies. So he, he got, do you want to describe? Or you no, no, no. go ahead, please. So he Why goes. You see, his matter. he's he's got a an arrow down his throat that he's choking on. Blood is pouring out of his mouth. He is rearing up to make an, one, another one of those bloody brays that he just did, and simultaneously uh, snapping his fingers and rubbing his nipples until he accidentally clips one, and 
<laughs> and it heats everything up in a, and it just he he keels over and, and dies. He kills over and dies. He died doing what he loved. He died doing what he loves. You, the last thing so. you hear is a gurgling. <laughs> I can't do it. I hate this thing. <laughs> um, and that's that's the, the that demon. Uh, there is one left on the field. Uh, three eldritch blasts at its face. Do I? Hey. I don't <laughs> uh, fucking hell. Two nat 20s and a 24. Okay, so you, I'm not even going to make you roll. It's dead. Can I just, just for fun? You can roll. <laughs> yeah, go for it if you want to. Okay. Got to make sure okay. it's super dead. <laughs> yeah, I want to see how dead it is. Uh, so okay. two, four. Got to do the math. It was two nat 20s. <laughs> and and some D6s. Oh my god, so many dice. Okay. <laughs> math. True BBG. 20, 26, 28. Uh, that is 68 points of damage with a cantrip. You wow. blow it into tiny little smithereens and that that when Winter said he was going to make it dust, you, you followed through on that and you made it dust. Ooh. Y'all are Results. out of combat. You, you blessed it so hard that the matter itself actually became affected by time and it immediately just gone. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck me. Oh, what do you do? Uh, guys, my tummy hurts so bad. Oh. Uh, winter. Lay on hands. Winter will, yeah. Okay, I was like, I have hands. no stealing spells. <laughs> winter sucks here. Winter goes up to you and, and puts his hand on your stomach. And uh, how much does he give her? How much? How bad are you? Um, I'm I'm at ninety out of one thirty five. Gilly's being a baby. Yo, oh, Gilly. Full on. No, he'll pump forty points into you. Oh, the yeah, drama. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah, thank you. You're my favorite mm-hmm. person. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, thank Damascus you. is slowly and laboriously climbing down this stupid giant mountain he teleported onto it's fine i got it i'll, I'll get down myself somehow i can help you but this is better this is more fun for me yeah. faza and uh Alewin are the only ones that did not get injured at all uh no wait i don't think you got hurt either uh arav did you during the combat, no, I took one no. point of damage from that like weird demon book in the nightstand. Yeah, yeah, from the paper. <laughs> yeah, that right. <laughs> um, uh, that's why I stay away. <laughs> Restriction gets up. You see, uh, the flail that he has kind of just begin to turn to gold and reabsorb uh, into his skin, and then suddenly he's wearing that necklace again. Cool. You've got and some he... nice trinkets. Wipes his mouth. Thank you. Would you like one? This feels like a trip. <laughs> That's the first time Gilly's ever had a thought like that in her entire life. I'm, I'm so it. proud of you. Yeah. <sighs> um, Arev would like to walk up to Vic Strixen. Mm-hmm. And as he walks up, the constellation of the archer where the tattoo of the arrow just uh, along his eye is like prominently glowing. Um, he, he walks forward and he actually reduces the constellation and with his twinkling um, starry form feature, he assumes the starry form of the chalice where the two tattoos of the chalices on his palms begin to illuminate uh, along with his sort of like astrally starred body. Mm-hmm. And he walks forward to Vic Strixen and he raises his hands to either side of his face, adjusts his glasses, and casts Cure Wounds at level two on him. Okay. While kissing his forehead just above his brow and saying, I'm glad that you're okay. Oh my God, swoon. I. I don't think because you're, you're in public, so he he's kind of just like he doesn't say anything. But you you feel him lean into your hands. Um, how much how much do you heal him? So because he is looking rough. Mm-hmm. So that was a level two cure wounds. Uh, so 
do, 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 do. It's a 2d8 plus 5. And because I'm actually in my starry form of the archer, or not the archer, the, the chalice, I heal them for another 2d8 plus 5. So it's 48 plus 10 so far. As well, because I'm in contact with Amelia's longbow, every oh time God. I cast uh, a spell that heal uh, that restores hit points, I can roll an additional d6 and add the number rolled to the amount of hit points restored, uh, provided I'm in contact with Amelia's bow. So that's 4d8 plus 1d6 plus 10. So nice. Heal bot. A ref is a good person to have around. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Oh no, yeah. I am. Um, I, I like to shoot magical, radiant, brilliant, shiny arrows, and if I can't do that, I'm gonna keep you all alive, like a lot, a lot. Because <laughs> I can, I can actually like divide that. If I do like a like a healing word kind of thing on someone, I can choose somebody else to heal with my um, chalice. So like, if two of you are hurt, I can be like, ting ting. That's and nice. one of it's free. So that is six, ten, seventeen, twenty-seven plus t- that's thirty-seven of hit the hit points that I restore. Oh, nice. Okay, so you give him thirty-seven hit points back. Why is this not working? Oh, that's why, because I'm dumb. Even thirty-seven hit points back. He looks he looks a lot better. Um, and you notice, you notice he has a bunch. Like he wears just a stupid amount of jewelry. Like all of his arms are different bangles that are, you know, covering him. You notice, um, a couple of them begin to glow and then get absorbed into his skin, and he looks right as rain after that. Well, that was a neat trick. Guess you didn't need me after all. <laughs> no, I definitely did. You saved me a lot of money. <laughs> he grabs your chin and gives you a kiss. I kiss him back lightly, but then when I break the kiss, I go demons and their priorities, and then I walk past him. <laughs> <laughs> you you walk past him and you walk into that gaping maw that leads into the mountains. Um straight into the maw. Yeah, that's straight perfect. into the maw. Yep. It and maw. love he maws. follows you. You find only a single passageway. As you continue to fo- to follow this winding passageway, you begin to feel the intense heat emanating from the walls and the floors. Uh, the thick air is suffocating, making it difficult to catch your breath. The jagged walls of the cavern loom above you, and veins of molten lava run through the rock, casting an eerie red glow on everything. You can hear a hiss and a sizzle of lava, punctuated by the occasional crack and rumble of the shifting stone that you walk upon. As you make your way deeper into the mountain, the passage continues to twist and turn, leading you further into the heart of this, the heart of darkness. The only light comes from, I just read that, I'm reading the same thing over again because my eyes left the page. Uh, (laughs) Finally, the passage begins to widen and you emerge into a large room that is lit by massive pits of bubbling lava. The room is cavernous with jagged walls and high ceilings that that disappear into the darkness above. Perception checks. Not great. Nine. Nine. There's a lot of lava. One. (laughs) It's hot. Also, your your pretty boy just kissed you. Uh, 24? Mm Mm-hmm. And 14. Okay, 24 and 14. Okay, 14. Kill me. The first thing you notice. (laughs) The first thing you notice uh, is the skull, which seems to be um, who 
uh, briefly mentioned bef- uh, whose cave you're in is, is called a demon called Zazrus. Um, and that's his motif. The, this, your, the shape of the lava pits, the natural lava pits make a skull around the room. Um, lava theme. At the end of the cavern, in the center of the room, uh, there's like a raised dais. And on top of that is a large obsidian throne that seems to be carved out of like rock, the rock itself. Uh, with, and this is uh, only a lay one really picking this out. Uh, the throne itself, like, is int- intricately carved with demonic figures and skulls for the armrests. Um, let's see here to the left and to the right. Um, Oh, I need you to roll me. Roll me an intelligence check with advantage because you've been here a while. Okay. It's going to be a 19 in total. Okay. You realize when you see the marks that are on the right and the left of this um of this throne that this is um this is a lair of a pit fiend. Okay. Um there are a whole bunch of rist- ritualistic symbols in in like a that glow this like sickly red color from all of, surfaces all over the place. Um there are tall pillars of black stone that line the walls. Um and they stretch up into the darkness of the cavern and the ceiling above you disappearing into the shadows uh the air around you is sizzling and and hot and like it is not uh it's not a place for mortals um the Fair. the scent of sulfur and brimstone is just awful there is bubbling of lava in the chamber and with your 24 you see a foot from uh sticking out from behind a gray foot sticking out from behind the uh chair from the throne just a foot uh who is whatever it attached to anything whatever yeah that was attached. whatever it's attached to is behind that throne okay all right cool uh at Let's let's roll. Uh, she'll relay the information of uh this being the cave of a pit fiend, and she'll point at the foot. Um, but she's she's pointing as she's like approaching. When the, you, um, yeah, when you throw. point, mm-hmm. uh, Renan, uh, Vistrixen takes off towards it. Yeah. immediately. I, I rev too. He's like the medicine guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You guys, uh, you get to the this throne, you get behind it, and there you see chained and very badly burned um, a man huddled on the floor behind the throne, about 5'10", and thin. He has long gray, gray hair that's tied back into a ponytail. Um, you know exactly who this is. He's burnt, he's shirtless, his horns are are, they look like they've almost like someone has grabbed them and started trying to pull them out of his head um Ranel is curled up and unconscious currently uh Vistrixen immediately drops beside him yes what would you like to do medicine check please roll me a medicine check I am absolutely looking around and like head on swivel yeah head on swivel looking for owner of this cavern yeah Mm -hmm. 18 18 he's he's badly injured but you see that he is still breathing and you know that ren and l heals so as you're looking him over you see bits of skin that are beginning to scab and get better and all of that um he's breathing he's unconscious is there anything you would like to do 
Did it take us more than 10 minutes to go from the battlefield to here? Yes. Damn. Um, so then my story form is dismissed. Uh, Ooh, do you need another spell slot? I can give you back a spell slot if you need it. Ooh. I have a thing for that. Oh, what? That's cool. So yeah. I, I don't. I don't theoretically need a spell slot. Uh, um, I'm. <sighs> okay. No. You know what? I'm not gonna meta game. Meta gaming would be to not use my starry form to try and save Renanel when what a rev would do in this instance when somebody needs him help his help is to use the resources available to him to do the best that he can. So a rev the character makes the decision to fly back into the chalice form. Okay. Erupting in light and casting another second level cure wounds on Renanel. Uh, to heal him as much as I possibly can. Okay. Um, I'll let you count that up. As you do that, uh, Vistrixen has like cradled the back of his head, and you see his uh, Renanel's eyes begin to flutter, and he looks up. And he goes, "Hmm, sorry." Oh, and Vistrixen is just like you. You see Vistrixen just shut up, and he gives him thirty. Yeah, nice. thirty hit points. He's he's able to even like sit up a bit, and Vistrixen grabs his face and just kisses him. They, he sits back, put their forehead to forehead for a moment. Before uh, Renanel looks at you and and reaches out a hand, I take it. He squeezes you. It's his. He's pretty weak, but he pull he pulls you in so that it's like a little three person hug. He gives you a kiss on the cheek. Thank you for coming. I wouldn't not. And as I say that, I reach just inside my armor. Mm -hmm. And I pull out a uh, pressed and dried. Um, I think you called it a blood lily. I did, except uh, Varian left that at your house. Uh, I thought a rev like pressed a copy and kept it on him. Did you do that when you got here that night? Oh, maybe because I don't... you were given one to take back with you, but it wasn't you that woke up. It was Varian, and Varian saw it and threw it in your house and left it there. I feel oh. like I remember him pressing a flower though at some point. I, I was pretty sure. Have. I was pretty sure I had. Okay, well then, what what we'll do is we'll go oh, with you. We'll just say that you have it. Go ahead. Oh no, I was I was gonna say I'll, I'll go with you. If like you remember Varian leaving it behind, then he'll reach for the flower and it won't be there, and he'll have this like poignant feeling of like shit that should have been there, and then he'll just not say what he was gonna say and feel bad, which is oh. more on brand for a rev. No, um, uh. Can, yes. I, can I can I try and wigman a rev a little bit? Yeah. Um, in your head, I notice that you reaching for it, and go. Can't you just create flowers out of nothing? Give it a try; it might work. And I'll give you bardic inspiration to see if you can like druid craft it. I want you to do the cute thing. That's that's fair. <laughs> do it. Uh, I will attempt. Did Druid craft a, a, a blood lily? And? I don't know. Do I need to roll? Oh, uh, uh you, what are you bardic inspiration? You're fine. You, you, yeah, in you, case you're going to roll. I didn't know if you were no, going to no, no. roll because it's a it's the principle of the thing. Because you used your bardic for that, <laughs> you can make a flower that you really have no idea how it subsists. I, I just sort of like 
I feel I feel the belief of my friends in this moment. <laughs> and uh the power of friendship. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? And uh I I think back because of it to those first moments, those dreams, uh, when I was drinking the tea, when um after I in my own headspace was able to sort of you know summon forth the the vista of the tree of reincarnation as like a hopeful site you know amongst the the roots and tangled floor and uh then when we re- re- revisited renanel and he brought me to the pain dimension or his visualization of it and taught me about these flowers and so there i am holding renanel's hand and actually physically here casting druid craft and through that connection and that memory that the two of us had just between us um i i pull forth this flower uh you see him look at it and you know running on a soft touch he's got a very soft heart and he looks t- he looks touched he, he looks like like he take he reaches out and he takes it from you and he looks like he can't believe that you mm, still had it and then he t- it takes a second to, to realize because he's still hurt that you actually made it and he was like you made you made it you can make these and he looks stunned for a second there bias well, right now i needed you to be Reminded that even in a place like this, something good can grow. Grabs you by the shirt and pulls you in and gives you a fucking kiss. <laughs> uh, a red while sandwich. That's happening, while that's happening, the cunning has stepped back and out of that and uh. is looking at these chains. And you see him touch the chains and then go, uh-huh. And they begin to just start to retract. And you see new bangles begin to form on him oh <laughs> mine now fascinating and renanel gets up i think that's where we will call the session actually we have two seconds left i'll do the i'll do the thing you your head is your head is uh damascus you've been looking around um and just as you begin to uh, you you wing Manarev and you look you begin to turn back around. You feel the presence of an overwhelming evil and hear the sound of deep breathing and a growl that comes from behind you. You turn to see where it's coming from, and in one of the lava pits, Zazros the Zealot begins to emerge, a towering figure standing seven feet tall with a large muscular build that speaks to just an incredible strength. His skin is a deep dark gray as if it's been charred by fire. There are several holes in his body that reveal glowing and impul- a glowing pulsating core of flames within him. Um, he's got a skull like face that's incredibly intimidating with fierce fiery eyes and his teeth are bared. There's it hints at him a very fearsome nature and there is faint smoke rising from his skin as he emerges from the lava and that is where we will call the session <laughs> gg guys gg 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 no uh, we're in danger fine it's fine <laughs> Is it, Jess, yeah. is there a ceiling? <laughs> it We're disappears in into nothing. There's darkness. Yeah. I'm so, so sorry. Somewhere, somewhere very lights. far above. Mm-hmm. Somewhere very far above, there is a ceiling. No, you Can know what? Worry. You know what? I'm going to make my own fucking ceiling next game. <laughs> Blast through That's the game. The spirit. <laughs> no, I, I mean it. I, I'm, I'm going to wombo yeah, you... combo this guy. Yeah. You have shape stone or whatever. Uh, I have stone. I have wall of stone. 
So I'm going to create a fucking ceiling and then I'm going to bones of earth this motherfucker into the ground. I love it. Amazing. I love it so much. Um, <laughs> I'm I Sneeze Stars and I have been your shenanigan sovereign. Uh, James. Hi, I'm James. I'm the thruple demon loving druid uh, with a boyfriend at home who kind of also belongs to our wizard uh stay tuned for drama <laughs> um <laughs> thanks for coming you can find me through the internet as mazrix or mazrix 24 uh i love my friends i love the game we play and i love y'all for being with us um let's pass that on to someone else uh also join our discord link in chat mm, bye it's me hi everybody hi, I'm oh yeah I'm unmuted, right? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Pyrea. You can find me on socials as Pyrea. Um, I am Elowen Alanthus, the uh, chronology wizard who can't use her time magic right now. We hate it. Uh, but also, it's fun. Uh, <laughs> that's long and short of it. Uh, let's go diagonal to Carol. Uh, I have been Carol. Hello. I have been Gilly Glean, the Warbarian. Is that yes, Warbarian? We've had fun. Hooray, right, we're going to die next again. week. Daniel. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm Dan. You can find me as the Speed of Candy on all the various internet places. I have been Damascus Silver, the half-elf bard warlock, who likes to run Naruto style and use awesome <laughs> ninjutsu skills. That was so cool, though. 100%. Like, running with his sword out the entire time. <laughs> uh, all right. Jess, did you say bye? I said bye, yeah. Okay. Bye, everybody. Okay, bye. 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 Bye.